Hello and welcome to week 2, unit 3 of our Open SAP course Build Resilient Applications on SAP BTP with Amazon Web Services. My name is Diego Lombardini and I'm an SAP Partner Solutions Architect with AWS. In this unit you will learn how to connect SAP Build Apps with AWS Services. Let's get started. So today we're going to cover an introduction to Amazon API Gateway and Amazon Simple Storage Service, also known as S3. Then we're going to go through a scenario that you're going to build and I'm going to do a demo. But before we start, what is Amazon API Gateway? As we briefly covered in Unit 1, APIs are the entry door for your serverless architectures. With Amazon API Gateway, you can manage and create all your APIs for enterprise. This means both for AWS services as well as external APIs. It is very simple to expose AWS services as APIs using Amazon API Gateway. You can manage versions for your APIs, security, access management, monitoring, throttling, and quota management. And it supports both RESTful APIs as well as WebSocket APIs. Now, what is Amazon Simple Storage Service? It's a service also known as Amazon S3, where you define buckets and objects. Now, what is a bucket? A bucket is a container where objects are stored. And objects are just files with its associated metadata. Things like files for data analytics, attachments, documents, pictures, as well as static websites can be hosted in Amazon S3. The key features of uh, S3 is that it's a highly reliable service with 11 nines of durability. It supports versioning and replication across geographical regions, as well as encryption. And you can store objects within different storage classes, which means you can manage the cost depending on the frequency that you need to access those files. Now the scenario that we're going to build today, we're going to start from what we built in last unit, and we're going to add the option to upload a file using Amazon API Gateway and S3. Now to do this, we're first going to create an S3 bucket where the files are going to be stored. Then we're going to create an identity access management role and policy so we can access this. We're then going to define an API on top of this S3 bucket where we can actually upload the file and read the file. And lastly, we're going to add this um, API to our build app so the file can be uploaded. Now let's go into the demo. Okay, now I'm going to go through a demo of the exercise that you'll be building this week. I'm going to first start creating an S3 bucket. This screen is the Amazon Web Services Console where all the services are available and accessible. You can see recently visited services and this is where you can access S3 if you have it. Otherwise you can add it to the favorites bar up here or you can search in the search bar. So I'm going to use the search bar to access it. And here's the Amazon S3 console. I'm going to create the bucket. And I'm going to call it bucket build apps. Um, one thing to keep in mind, the bucket name needs to be unique globally. So only one account can have one bucket with a specific name. I'm going to leave the region as US this one. And I'm going to leave the rest of the settings by default, including blocking all public access and encryption using the Amazon S3 managed keys. And I'm going to create the bucket now. And now my bucket is created. Now, before we create an API, we need to make sure we have access to um, the bucket, right? And we need to also be able to um, utilize this bucket via APIs. So I'm going to go into Identity and Access Management, which is IAM, which I have here in my favorites bar. And I'm going to first create a role. So I'm going to go into Roles. I'm going to create a role. This role will be a custom trust policy. And what we need to do here is we need to uh, allow um, our API to assume a role so then it can um, access the S3 bucket. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this policy here. So 
Well, basically what we're saying here is we're allowing the API Gateway service to assume a role. That means it was going to be able to access our API in the S3 bucket. Now, we're still not giving access to S3. In this case, we're just allowing API Gateway to assume the role. Next, we're going to need to create a policy so we can actually provide access to our S3 bucket. Okay, so in here you can see a policy editor and it's a graphical um, representation where you can actually go through a, a wizard where you can click on options for S3. In this case, I'm going to use a JSON definition. Okay, so this policy, what basically we're saying is, this is our resource, which is our S3 bucket, called bucket build apps. We provide an access to this bucket, and we're allowing put object, which basically means saving an object, and get object, which means reading an object. So in the next step, we are gonna create an API, which is gonna have a put method and a get method. Now, we're gonna go next. We're gonna define a name for the old policy. And I'm going to call it Build Apps Policy S3 API. You can see here that it's already identified the JSON and it's already said this role allows me to read and write and for a specific bucket name, which is called Build, sorry, Bucket Build Apps. Creating the policy. All right, so now go, going to go back to our role and we're going to add the policy we've just created called Build Apps Policy S3 API. And we're going to call this role Build apps role S3 API. So again, we have a policy that gives us access to the S3 bucket to put and get files, and we're also allowing this role to be accessible via API Gateway. And now we create the role. Okay. Now if we search for the role, we can see the role has been created. Now the next step is to create our API. So we're going to go into API Gateway. And we're going to create a REST API. You can see here that it supports AWS services, which is effectively what we're doing. So we're going to build. In this case, we just want to create a new API. So we're going to leave it as REST and we're going to say create new API as new API. And we're going to define a name. In this case, I'm going to call it Build Apps API. For the endpoint type, we're going to keep it regional, meaning it's within the region. We could define it as a Edge, which is effectively in an Edge zone, or Private, which is within your VPC only. But in this case, we need access externally. Now we're creating the API. All right, so now the API is created, but we don't have any methods or any resources. So the first thing we need to do is we're gonna create resources. So the first resource, we're gonna call it folder. Both the resource name and the path. This is going to basically define uh, a path within the URL of the API. And subsequently, we're going to create another resource called item. And again, this is also going to be part of the URL. And then we're going to be able to map this folder and item to the bucket 
and the file that we're going to be able to put and read in our S3 bucket. Okay, now we have the paths. The next step is to create the methods. We're going to first start with a put method, which is going to allow us to save the file in the S3 bucket. So we create a method and we select put. Okay, now we need to define what this is going to call, what this put method is going to call. So in this case, we're going to be using an AWS service. So this is part of the native integration that we mentioned uh, in the beginning of this unit, where you can easily integrate without having to write code. So the first thing we need to define the region. In this case, we define the bucket in US is one, so we're going to use US is one. And now we're going to go for the service, which is simple storage service or S3. We're going to leave the subdomain blank. The method we're going to use is put, and we're going to override the path. So what we're going to do is we're going to use bucket and object in the path, and this is going to allow us then to map bucket to folder and object to item, and I'll show you that. Now the next step is to define the execution role, right? which basically is the role that um, we have created before. So this will allow that when we call this API, it's going to use this role to, int to, to, to call S3 and be able to put and read files. So I'm going to paste this here. And then we're going to leave the rest um, with the default settings. We're going to save. So we have now uh, defined our put method, and now we need to um, effectively do the mapping um, of the path to the bucket and the object, and then we also need to um, change our authentication or security method. Let's start first with the mapping. So we're going to go to the URL path parameters, and we're going to add path, and the first parameter is going to be bucket, and what we're doing is that we're mapping the bucket to method dot request path. And basically, now we define the folder. So what this is saying is basically for the request that we call through this um, resource, we will map the folder to the bucket. And now we're going to add mapping for the object, which is going to be method dot request dot path dot item. So again, we're going to now map the object, which is effectively the file, to the item. So when we call the API with a slash bucket slash file, it's going to map to the bucket and the object in the request. Okay. So now we're going to go to create our get, get method. And similar to what we've done before, we're going to map it to the AWS service, same region. Same service. But of course, the method is going to be get. And we're going to use the same path override. And in this case, we're going to use the same role that we used before. Now, as you would have noticed, when we defined the role, we had both get and put, so we could have split this using two different roles or two different policies, but in this case we're just using one for simplicity. Okay, so we've now created the get method, and as we did before, we're going to need to map the parameters. So we're going to do a bucket.
folder, sorry, object. item all right now we've got to get input one other thing we're going to do because we're going to be uploading a PDF file we need to make sure we treat that PDF file appropriately so we're going to go to the settings of this API some of the parameters we had before uh, like the name and the endpoint type but here we're going to effectively um, allow to manage these uh, PDF files as PDF as opposed to JSON. So in here what we're going to do is we're going to allow application PDF. If you were to use uh, JPEGs or any type of files, you also need to uh, allow this here. All right. So now we've defined the API. The last thing we have to do is we need to um, allow API keys. So this means we're going to add security into our method. So we're going to add an API key uh, requirement for a put method. So that's done uh, within the method request. So in here you can see that we have the API key required. There's different ways that we can uh, secure this API. In this case, we're going to use the API key. And effectively, we're going to set this to true. And we then go back. Okay, so we've now defined in the method request the API key to be uh, required. And the next step is to now um, deploy this API. So we're going to deploy the API. When we deploy the API, it requests uh, for a deployment stage in the description. Deployment stage, it's effectively used for defining different stages on different status of the APIs. This can be used, for example, to manage different environments or uh, the most uh, popular use case is to manage version. So if we want to release version 2 of the API and version 1 keep, keep running, we can use the stages to define that. And that's what we're going to do in here. We're going to call v1 and we say version 1. And we can also add descriptions to the deployment. So we can do multiple deployments within the same version. And here we can add uh, details about it. Now there's some settings um, uh, for the API. So we're basically going to um, leave this by default. Um, and we're going to save the changes. All right. So now the API has been uh, published. The next thing we now have to do is we need to um, create the API key so we can actually connect to this API. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define an usage plan. And the usage plan is where you can define things like throttling, quota, and this is where the API keys uh, will also be mapped to. So we're going to create a usage plan. And this allows you to define things like a level of service depending on who's consuming the, the different apps via APIs. So let's call this build API plan. Um, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to turn off throttling and quota. Now we basically map this usage plan to the API stage, which we just created, which was build apps API and the stage v1. We go to next, and now we need to uh, associate the API keys, but because we don't have any, we're going to create one. So in this case, you can see the example talks about customer name or user or application, depending on what you're actually securing here. So we're going to call this build API key. We're going to leave it to auto generate a key in this case. OK, 
Okay, so now we have the APK, API key defined and you can see that here. Once we start using it, uh, we can actually look at the usage and how many calls we've got. And in this case, we have the ID for the key and if we click in show, you'll be able to see uh, the API key. So this is effectively what you're gonna use when you call uh, your API from build apps. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Praveen, who's gonna basically use this API and this API key to consume the API from SAP build apps. Thanks, Diego. We have built the business partner onboarding application in unit two. Let us enhance this application by adding the functionality to upload supporting documents to Amazon S3. Let us open the business partner onboarding application that we have created using SAP Build Apps from the lobby. We need to create few page variables that we will be using for this functionality. So I have already created these variables. We'll use the file upload variable to store the selected files. S3 API key variable is used for the API key to access S3 APIs. Upload URL variable is used to store the Amazon API Gateway S3 bucket path. We'll now add the option to select the files by dragging and dropping the button. We'll rename it to select document. SAP Build Apps provides the pick files flow function that we can use to select the documents. We can install this pick files flow function from the marketplace. Pick files opens a native document picker allowing you to pick files from the device file system. Add the pick files flow function to the logic of select document button and save the selected file content to page variable file upload. Enhance the create button logic by adding upload files functionality. Install the upload files flow function from the marketplace. Upload files flow function uploads file to the given URLs. We will now add upload files flow function to the create button logic. We will now bind file upload page variable to the files to upload input. Let us add the content type and X API key to the headers. We will save the application and let us test this application by clicking on launch. Open the preview portal to test the application.
So the business partner is created successfully. We can now go to the S3 bucket and then see whether the file is uploaded or not. Yeah, we can now see the file is uploaded successfully. Thank you. Now that you have seen the demo, to learn more about AWS services and SAP build apps, you can follow these links. In this unit, you have learned how to set up Amazon S3 and API Gateway, configuring API Gateway to expose Amazon S3 APIs and consuming them from SAP build apps. In the next unit, you will learn how to enhance your business process with SAP build process automation. Thank you.